How should the church nurture and engage people's spiritual gifts? Well, I, I believe that <clears throat> the Bible teaches that Christ is the head of the church and we are his body. Therefore, the head dictates to the body what the body does. This is not just a metaphor found in the New Testament. It is the literal truth. We are the visible representation of Christ on this earth. And He is the head. And spiritually, we are in union with Him. And, and, and by the way, to complete the illustration, I think the Holy Spirit is the central nervous system that connects the head with every member of the body. The Spirit of Christ in us. And the Holy Spirit is going to operate in those who are faithful to obey whether they know their gifts or not. I, I'm one that doesn't necessarily believe you have to know your gifts in order to function according to the gifting of the Holy Spirit. I do think it's to your advantage to know that. I also think it can be a disadvantage. If you are faithful to obey God, you are going to operate according to your gifts. And so the question now is, what are the gifts of the Spirit? Quickly, little Little miniature lesson on the gifts of the Spirit. I call them the rose-colored glasses that tint your vision. Your gifting. My wife has the gift of mercy. She's a merciful, service-oriented type of person. That's her giftedness. That's going to color the way she views the world. Me, I'm more, I don't think you could ever guess, more of the, on the prophetic side. Not predicting what's going to happen, but pointing my finger and say, you're the man. Repent. That colors my glasses or tints my vision. I see the world through that prism. I believe if we all just got on our faces right now, quit singing songs and just get on our faces and cry out to God, we're going to be better off. You see how that gift focuses my perception? Where did that come from? It came from God by the Holy Spirit. But secondly, a spiritual gift is a capacity to develop. If, if you have the gift of teaching and you, you were saved yesterday and God gave you the gift of teaching, are you proficient to teach? No, but you have the capacity to develop in that area. And so it is a desired a burden that God puts within your heart. And you're going to do that if you have the Holy Spirit within you because he gave that to you, whether you know that gift or not. But um, I, don't, I, I think spiritual gift inventories and tests like that are really disadvantage, a disadvantage. I remember years and years ago, <laughs> in my ignorance and youthfulness, I, I gave, I administered a test in my church because I wanted to get everybody doing what their gifts should have them doing. And there was a brother in the church. I love him. I love him to this day. We still communicate. But I knew, I knew in his heart of hearts, he wanted to be involved in ministry. And when he took that test, he scored high in shepherding. And I knew by observing him, he didn't have that gift. I mean, he didn't have it even, not even his pinky did he have it. He didn't have it at all. But why did he score high? Because he knew how to answer the question. Those things are faulty. The best way to know what your gift is is just be faithful to the burdens that God puts on your heart. And you're going to notice a certain gravitation to a certain kind of ministry. And then, secondly, the greatest, the greatest proof or determiner of your gifts is your brothers and sisters, your local church. Your elders, your pastors, and your local church. They will help you to see what those gifts are. I'll, I'll piggyback ever so briefly. One of my favorite New Testament exhortations here is in Romans 12, uh, verses 3 through 8. And there at the end, uh, Paul runs through a list of, I think, seven different gifts, um, prophecy being one of them, uh, mercy being another, teaching being another, uh, giving or generosity being another. And, and his culminating exhortation is four words, let us use them. 
And, and I found one of the greatest things to do is not, not be so concerned and introspective about what, what is my gift, what are my gifts, as though you're anxious about this, or you, you cannot fulfill God's calling in your life unless you know exactly what your gifts are. I think that's deceptive and unwise, but, but rather get, get to work. Um, so serve within your local body and, and be busy in serving the saints. I love a phrase Paul uses, I think New King James, King James translation renders it addicted. ESV is devoted, but be devoted to the saints or addicted to the saints. And, and your gift will become manifest, as Michael said, from your elders, pastors, brothers and sisters in the body. They're going to say, hey, I, I see how God is using you. I, I see where your fruit is coming from. From a pastor's perspective, I'll, I'll just add another brief note. It, it seems that that was part of the question, maybe, how has this grown in the church I think it's through observation, one, and, and then cultivating what you observe. Observation, cultivation. So pastorally, if, if I'm going to be with a family in the church that, that is just any time they could sign up for something, they're signing up, right? To cook a meal for a needy family, to help with a move within the church, um, whatever the project might be. If, if this family is just always present, then, then what should I be doing as a pastor? When I'm with them, I should be encouraging and nurturing and cultivating those gifts in, in young men that I see coming up in the midst of discipling them. If I see that they, they have certain gifting, I, I ought to be pointing them into outlets in which they can operate in that gifting. So observation and then cultivation. Just a follow-up question on this topic. Is there a way to go about telling someone that they don't have that particular gift that they think they have? How would you go about that? Well, the prophet probably is not the person to do that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't call Michael. <laughs> yeah. Let's call yeah. my wife. Yeah, no. ask Karen to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you you want to you wanna share? No, it's... I, I, no, I, I think you, you, you can handle it because well, you're more pastoral than I am. <laughs> my answer was going to be one word as to how do you do that? Lovingly. Yeah. But, it, but you do it. Yeah, I had to tell that man that he, I didn't see the giftings there. And I, I was real gentle with him. I can be gentle. Don't tell anybody. But I can, I can do that. Um, but, but I do want to piggyback on that, too, that, is that pastor, I want to speak to the, the pastors that are here. When it says that you are given the oversight of the church, that doesn't mean that you're to organize and create ministries. No, you're to observe what our brother just said was so wise and you need to listen. So I'm going to repeat, you need to observe how God has already gifted it by what they're doing. Because if you've been gifted, most often when you exercise that gift, it will not drain your battery. It energizes you. That's one of the ways you know where you're gifted. Because if, if you can, like your phone, and the battery's bad, you know, you turn it on, and, and, and within 30 minutes it's already depleted. Then you're probably not, being ex you're not exercising yourself in the gift that God gave you. So pastors, you and I are just to help the, the members of the church, like a traffic cop. We're giving oversight. We're making sure they don't run into each other as they're busy doing their ministry, that they're not just duplicating themselves. We're providing oversight and equipment to turn them loose to do the work of the ministry. One of the things I see pastors guilty of is that they, they're trying to do the work of the ministry when God didn't call you to the work of the ministry, he called you to the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. And that is because God has gifted every person in your church with at least one of the gifts of the Spirit. 